interesting to take a few steps back in time uh, and to see how much can change in such a abrupt way. Um, I hope that everyone that listens to this um, will have a great benefit from it. Um, it was uh, recorded with a lot of heart, a lot of feeling, and a lot of truth. And um, just want to also state for myself um, that there is no uh, ill will, uh, nothing other than what remains um, in me at this moment is um, to speak the truth, to follow the truth no matter where it leads us. And uh, so here um, I am speaking the second part of an interview now with uh, good ETXSG, um, who was a member of the Project Avalon Forum and at the current time is no longer such. Um, life moves on, doors close and doors open. And I think it is with a great deal of uh, heart, feeling, love, honor uh, that we all move forward through this time. Thank you. All right, so this is Christine, moderator at the Project Avalon Forum, and uh, today I have the honor and the pleasure of speaking with uh, the forum member that is known as Good ETXSG. Um, many of you are very aware of his, um, as the first part of a, an audio release we did, I believe it was at the end of September, October? Yeah, around the September 23rd, and then... Yeah. Again, on October 3rd, I believe. Okay. So, um, since that time, uh, a lot of things have been happening, I would suggest, in, um, in Good's world. I'm going to refer to him as Jim during this interview today, um, because we know each other, and it's uh, an easy, informal uh, name for me to use. Uh, that way I won't be using his real name. It's his alias. Um, I know there's a lot of things that we may be speaking about today, Jim. We had a little talk the other day, and I certainly know since we released that audio, it has brought about uh, pretty much an avalanche or a tsunami of responses from people out there, forum members, uh, other people are contacting you. I've been contacted. Uh, a lot of healing work is going on, and it's just been hard to keep up with it. I mean, I haven't even myself been able to keep up with all your postings, so I apologize for that. I've, I've read a great deal of it, but certainly not all of it. Uh, I also want to thank you uh, really from a very uh, deep place of gratitude for your grace and your manner and how you've been answering uh, the folks' questions. Um, you certainly know how sensitive all of these issues are and also how broad and vast the subject matter is that we're talking about. Um, so I just, you know, hats off to you, and uh, I'll take uh, hats off for Bill Ryan, too, as I know he's uh, been very pleased with the way that both threads have been uh, rolling out for everyone. It's, it's pretty amazing to see such a, a great amount of intelligence and civility being exercised on the forum. So thank you, Jim. No. I've done the best I can. I've, um, I've really, <clears throat> of course, you know, when we first did uh, the first recording of the conversation, uh, it was in a very, um, it was done in a kind of very relaxed format. Uh, you know, my wife was in the background, my uh, three, nearly four-year-old son was there, and um, I was talking for the first time out loud on a mm -hmm. lot of stuff. Right. And, uh, some of the stuff, a good deal of the stuff she had heard before, but um, I was I was talking. I was a little hesitant because uh, she was walking around, and I was like, "Okay, <laughs> now how is she going to react to some of this stuff?" Mm -hmm. But after Christine leaves, I'm going to have a lot of questions. <laughs> right. You know, so I I was I had I was on a number of levels. I was I was a little nervous. Um, it was the first time since the entity detachment uh, situation that I was pretty much clear and able to talk about it without locking up. Right, yes. And, and you can attest to that. We had tried to talk about it before, and uh, I had um, gotten so tongue-tied, and I, I was unable to talk about it to where I actually had to leave the room. Right, yeah. Uh, maybe it would be good just to have, for the audio purpose this time, just a little background. That first audio wasn't meant for uh, publication, and um, both of us, Jim and I, knew about that. Uh, it actually was, uh, I would say, at the end of two years of you and I getting to know each other. 
and developing a relationship, uh, trust, sharing our own insights. Uh, and the thing I really want to note here, because we will probably get into it in this talk a bit, uh, is that it became aware uh, uh, to me uh, from being on the forum and uh, reading different people's posts, but especially reading um, your posts, uh, that I was sharing a lot of your same perceptual data. And so I started to share with you some of the uh, remote viewing data I was getting, which was very surprising for me because it sort of started coming to me out of the blue. Uh, it wasn't something I was trained in. And you would start verifying it for me. Uh, and that was so valuable that it became for me a part of what I believe is what we're doing on the forum is sharing our information in a free uh, uh, way. And I've seen, and I especially see it with the release of, your, of the, the last audio, was that the, you're overcoming uh, the triggers, the implants, the overlays, the fear, uh, all the things that you experienced from early childhood has allowed many others to open up and start to share their experiences. So I think this is going to be a bit of a continuation of that. Um, since then, I've also, like you, have had contact with people all over who are feeling for the first time they can speak. And so I just want to uh, honor that as part of what, what we're doing, not just having this talk today, uh, Jim, but also on the uh, Project Avalon Forum. Um, there's a bridge here, and I just want to make note of it, and then I'll hand it over to you. Um, there seems to be a bridging happening between what are all of these uh, um, human agendas, uh, extraterrestrial agendas, uh, AI agendas, uh, our mythologies, uh, we could name it all, the symbologies under which we're operating, all of the things that keep being brought up to the surface. And then there's the act or the understanding of our real spiritual nature. Uh, we could call it our quantum beingness, or we could call it how we are as res beings of resonance. And that was, for me, with you, was probably the most important uh, part of feeling the connection, was understanding that you also have not only the experiential data, but you also have a broader picture of who we are as spiritual beings. So that's the broad brush context of perhaps what this conversation or this interview will be geared or progressing towards. Um, now, I'd like you to just say whatever it is that you might want to talk about to begin with, um, and just maybe leading in a little bit, a lot of people have asked about, because I made that comment, a lot of miracles happened in your life after publishing, and, uh, and you've spoken uh, on the form about the entity detachments, but that wasn't included in our first audio, and I w would wonder if you'd like to start there. Okay. Um, yeah, um, I... I you know, I, I was uh, I, I was a little disappointed and, uh, that the entity attachment uh, part was not in the uh, in the last uh, uh, conversation that was released. Um, just just because it's such a, a, a very important part of the process mm -hmm. of uh, what it is to be um, uh, to, to to be released from uh, all of the programming and the mind control. And um, uh, and uh, the the entities are a lot of the times um, involved in along with this technology. They're the gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, after I started talking openly on the forum about it uh, in detail about the actual uh, entity that I remote viewed in my light body. And uh, then uh, um, after I listened to uh, Eve uh, Lorgan. Lorgan. Is that right? Uh-huh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, uh, James uh, Bartley uh, in an interview about entity attachments, um, I remembered um, uh, remote viewing that I'd done a year and a half earlier where I saw this being and my light body, and it made me forget it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was able to use some uh, different tactics to um, will it out of my being. And uh, that was in between two of our conversations that this happened. Right. 
And uh, it went from me locking up and not being able to, to have conversations about certain things to being able to have a full conversation and being able, I could always access these memories, but I could not verbalize them. Right. And when I immediately, when I started writing about this on the forum, I was unprepared for the tsunami of emails and uh, personal personal mails through uh, Avalon that I received. And uh, I, I mean, I was really caught off guard. Uh, how many people um, are dealing with this kind of thing? And uh, you know, I've. There's been some that, you know, I've tried, I've handled on my own, that I've been working with on my own, because people that have been through this are a very skittish bunch. They have uh, major trust issues. Of course. And uh, with me, knowing what I've been through, they have a little bit of a uh, kind of, a little bit of a trust, but a camaraderie, or, or, you know, I've been through the same thing. So they will feel me out see if I'm, you know, kind of vet me to see if I'm, you know, full of crap. And once, you know, I kind of vet them too. And once we fill each other out, then we'll have a conversation. And, you know, there's been people that I send to the way of uh, the Avalon Healing Group. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's something that I don't think hardly anyone knows. Um, People just see Avalon Forum and think it's just some... forum where people go uh, when they're bored to sit and hack around on the computer and talk about aliens and UFOs. Mm-hmm. They don't realize in the background all the resources that Avalon has. They have all different types of uh, energetic healers, remote viewers, uh, counselors for people that have been through ritual abuse, uh, uh, my labs and uh, uh, alien abduction, all these different types of things. Right. And uh, I've, you know, I've referred people through you to the healing group, and there's always a place for people to find healing uh, at Avalon that I've found. Yeah, thank you, Jim. I just uh, underlined that. It- just to really put it forward what it is, it's, it's all grassroots, too. Uh, yes. Even though some people are very professional, uh, we have a lot of professional uh, healers and researchers on the forum. Uh, but what they, we, they remain very anonymous. Yes, they do. In the forum, mm-hmm. But a lot of this stuff goes on in the background. Yes. So people that are openly in the forum do not realize what all goes on behind the scenes. No. And I've gotten a little peek at it just from, you know, recently, you know, referring some people that are seriously in pain mm-hmm. under spiritual attack or under uh, attack, entity attack, uh, all other different types of things. And I've seen uh, the resources y'all have to marshal. And, uh, you know, people need to know that there's more to Avalon than just uh, some uh you know, some researchers or just some, uh, just a bunch of moderators sitting around with nothing else to do, uh, watching over a forum. (laughs) Thank you. you. Yeah, uh, I think uh, the healers group is actually called Avalon 24-7. I think that's pretty adequate name. (laughs) Right. Okay. And and it's 24-7 is exactly right. I think you are all over the globe, aren't you? Oh, yeah, all over the globe. And, you know, a lot of us realize that, you know, even in our sleep, we're actually being accessed and working. So... Uh, it's an it's a fabulous uh, activity. Um, I'll probably do something a little later. I'll do my own little uh, talk about that in the next week or so. So thanks for yeah. mentioning it. And I just yeah, like, I, I know I know this was uh, this is about my material, but yeah. I can't talk about uh, the entity attachments and some of my material without mentioning that. Sure. Because I've been so inundated and overwhelmed with insiders and uh, people um, that have been coming to me that I've had to, you know, offload and, and come to y'all. Yeah, well, it's, and, it's, um, it's really you know, and uh, there's been some major, I've had some major insiders. Sure. Uh, one, you know, one in particular that was active in 
uh, one of the uh, secret space programs that uh, very few know uh, about uh, called the Dark Fleet. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, very few have inside information, and I was excited about it. And uh, um, for a short time, um, someone that will be re remain nameless had uh, released my full name out in public, mm -hmm. and uh, it caused this person to clamp up and remove themselves. And I haven't been able to talk to them again, and I was getting some really good information from them. Right. So, it's really unfortunate. Yeah, so let's just underline that point here is that, you know, the information that you're sharing and a lot of the people that are talking, and it is literally mind-blowing. Uh, this is not, you know, the, what's happening right now. Those that uh, are sharing privately um, and will feasibly share uh, publicly at some point, um, it, the information is staggering in its implication. Um, and that, the, I just... If you don't mind, just to underline going back to your, the uh, incident where the entities were detached from you, um, I think it might be nice if you just give a description of how that was accomplished. Because there's a lot of people sitting out there right now listening and wanting to know. And then number two, I think there's something that happened outside of your expectations. I think you were... Uh, wires that say to think that if you spoke really bad things would happen and if in your estimation the opposite has ha taken place um yeah i um i was uh, programmed with um different kinds of triggers different people are programmed with different kinds of triggers mm -hmm. uh, that um, sometimes they don't know why but they'll uh, um some things made me uh, for some reason, I was just, beyond my personality, I was just angry, you know, making me angry, react angrily. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have two children and a wife, you know, and I'm, I'm a real laid-back kind of guy, and it was just not my personality. And I would see certain materials online or, or that kind of thing. And, um, there, you know, there's different triggers, and people don't realize that that. You know, people can come onto a forum, and it may look like they're on there to give a narrative that looks pretty interesting, and but they're giving triggers on purpose, and it can cause people that are programmed with triggers, different kinds of triggers, to hurt themselves, hurt their family, uh, to go as far as even murder or suicide, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, uh, or emotionally abuse people. Um, there's a lot of different things, and you know, I felt I felt that if I were to push the boundaries, something like that uh, uh, was possible. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I had been warned off uh, about some of the stuff I had spoken about uh, very vaguely in some of my threads over the uh, last few years you know, to stop being so open. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, I was I was nervous about that. So um, about, uh, now it's been close to two years ago, um, I had this weird urge to remote view my light body. Mm -hmm. So I sat down and I start reviewing, remote viewing my light body. Um, and um, I because of the things I've been through, my, my light body was is uh, quite a bit further out than my physical body. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I started uh, from the bottom top, and I started moving, and I saw all these different orbs just uh, at different frequencies resonating, mm -hmm. uh, different, uh, different colors, usually uh, in the higher... Uh, out of the Roy G. Bibb spectrum and the um, the, uh, uh, the green, blue, indigo, violet mm -hmm. spectrum. And uh, the overall background field color uh, was kind of a, a yellowish uh, color that I was in. And so I was moving throughout the uh, spheres, moving my way up. And I got about three quarters of the way up, and I saw a red sphere, smaller than the others, mm -hmm. and it wasn't vibrating. 
it was just out of place sitting there and um i immediately with my mind i moved to it and i looked at it and i was like what is this and in my mind i said no transparent what's inside mm -hmm. and about a 90 degree arc of a sphere if you can picture that mm -hmm. went translucent and sitting inside of it was a beam and i was shocked and it was probably twice as shocked as i was and um, it looked like a, kind of like a hunchbacked frog hmm. But uh, instead of a frog that's long ways, it was kind of like if you took a frog and squished it and made it perpendicular up and down. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a, a short dialogue. Um, you know, it was like, you know, it was, it was wanting to know how I knew about it. And uh, you're not supposed to know about me. And I was... You know, I was, I was asking, how long have you been here? And it was telling me, I've always been here. I've been here forever, your whole life. And uh, he told me, you're mine. You belong to me. Um, there was, a, there was a, a long dialogue that I don't remember all of, but it told me, it said, you will forget me. And it held its long, skinny, looked like a dried up dead frog's arm. It held it up and it said, you will forget me. Mm. And I came out of the uh, session, and I told my wife, and uh, back then, um, she, bless her heart, she had, she's gone through a lot of awakening since then. She looked at me and was concerned. <laughs> uh, she, you know, she was like, she was, that's really weird, honey. Mm -hmm. And she goes, I, she goes, I wouldn't uh, tell too many people about that. Uh, and, you know, I was like, oh, I won't, I won't. And, and then I was immediately... <clears throat> sorry that I told her. I was mm. like, I shouldn't have said anything. And within three days, both of us totally forgot about it. Right. And it had told me also in there that I asked who it was, and he, he told me he was the gatekeeper. Okay. Wow. <clears throat> and uh, after I watched, uh, there was uh, uh, one of the members... Uh, they said me or someone posted a uh, video uh, and there were a whole bunch of videos about my labs and different stuff but for some reason this one stuck out mm -hmm. so I, I played it and about three quarters of the way through it started talking about entity attachments mm -hmm. and all of a sudden boom I pictured that entity sitting in its sphere and it looked like it was sitting inside of a almost like it was a little self-contained spaceship mm -hmm. sphere. and i felt it cringe because hmm. i remembered it and then i remembered it and i was like holy crap um and then i i remembered it and i was like okay i'm gonna get rid of this sucker mm -hmm. and it was talking about uh you know you can will it out of your life with your uh free will so I started doing that. I started will, uh, saying, I will you out of my life. I want you out of my life. And um, the, it was saying, you know, it's, it's not going to be that easy. You know, you belong to me. And I kept, uh, kept doing that. And then I felt that it was gone. Right. But uh, I still uh, didn't feel right. And for the next couple of nights, it was coming in my dreams and tormenting me and, attack, and attacking me in my dreams. Mm -hmm. And I told Stacy about it. And um, th this is going to be a part that a lot of people are going to have a problem with. And I, kn I know there's uh, a lot of people that have uh, their own beliefs and ideas about um, the name or the entity that was or was not Jesus. So I'm not going to get into any ideology of it. I understand. But, um, she said, did you think about evoking the name Jesus? And I said, well, no, I did not think of that. 
And she said, well, you should try that. And uh, I had heard in some of the videos about my labs that people had done that and it had worked. And in some instances, you know, it had not worked, you know, and stuff. So I, I tried. Uh, so uh, the next night I was attacked all night. And in the early mornings, I kind of came in out of a lucid dream and, and woke up after I was being attacked. And I started, I said, okay, I'm going to do it. And I said, uh, in the name of Jesus, I banish all entities that are attached to my body, mind, and spirit. I close all portals or entrances into or out of my body mind complex i banish them from my family the realm of my family and, and from my home and i re started repeating it over and over with my eyes closed mm -hmm. and immediately started seeing all of these beings and groups of like six to twelve going sh 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 shooting from my head and chest wow. just above and so I, I kept saying it over and over and then I opened my eyes, and I could still see them. Wow. And uh, people have discussed with me what they were. People have said, those sound like the gen or, or whatever, but they had the head and shoulder outline of a human being, and, like, the arms, and then, like, black flames and smoke coming off the bottom part of them. Mm -hmm. and uh, they were shrieking and screaming in terror and anger, and they were flying off of me yeah. and, and groups of about, about a dozen, and, like, this had tons and tons of them shot off of me. And uh, after that happened, uh, I got up, and um, I felt... A freedom that, like I have never felt before. Um, my wife and kids um, were like, "There's something different about you. You, you know, you're totally different." I'd been uh, diagnosed with PTSD. I didn't have to take uh, uh, most of the PTSD medicines, um, except for a little bit of medicine for anxiety. Um, and uh, our dog that always kept its distance from me now just will not leave me alone. It's all over me. Oh. And it's just the weirdest thing. And then the next time you came over, mm -hmm. uh, started, you tried, well, I think you tried one more time. You know, you were very gently trying to talk about things. And I just opened up and boom. It was like diarrhea of the mouth. It just came <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can attest to the change in the energy field for sure. Yeah. Um, and it was like, we were like talking for like, I think 30 minutes. And I was like, do you realize like the difference? And you were like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no, I, I realize it. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. every time we had gotten maybe 10 or 15 minutes into trying to talk about some of this stuff, I totally locked up, could not talk about it. Mm -hmm felt total fear, anxiety, uh, pain, uh, flashbacks of uh, certain entities, certain things that were done to me. I would get flashbacks that were uh, terrorizing, mm -hmm. and uh, it, was, it was terrible. Yeah. And those are all gone. I, I've been able to talk about it and uh, not have any of those problem sense. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, it, it, it absolutely is. And I think it's really important people hear that because a lot of people are in the same situation or worse than you have been. And to know that, always to know that there is a way out of it, even if it, I know for you for a long time, it seemed like you never were going to get free of these things. And they were super suppressive. I mean, not just to you, but your whole family. And it's your 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 great courage, really, for having withstood so much for so long. So, uh, thanks for sharing that. Um, I, I'm also, as you're speaking, I'm realizing um, there's something you brought in there, which is uh, uh, about synchronicity. Yeah. Um, 
And would you say that, well, it's always probably been this case for you, but it was something I'm noticing and is how uh, knowledge is power or how when we have an expanded knowledge or when we're out from under suppression, how we start to uh, be able to expand. And I've certainly no noticed an uptick in synchronicity. Like somehow you just get the information you need. Like you said on the forum, somebody posted something and you went right to it. Like there's something else operating here as more of people are speaking uh, that I just will dub it as synchronicity. Has that been the case for you? Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Without all of the gatekeepers and uh, uh, one of the things that I've talked about is um, human beings, because of all of our genetic ma manipulation and because of who we are mentally and spiritually, we have a wider spectrum or band of emotions than most of the beings out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have also a very extreme potential in our uh, individual and combined consciousness. Mm -hmm. And I've talked about, you know, I mean, uh, David Wilcox books, uh, The Source Field, Ever, a lot of people have read those. There's other researchers out there that have talked about um, you know, how everything around us is vibration, uh, matter, energy, thought, it is all mm -hmm. vibration of a different resonance. And consciousness interacts with those uh, vibrations and, and can manipulate them. And our mass consciousness is what is creating the, our shared reality. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the powers that be know this. And this is the root power of their magic. They use television and movies to uh, plant a seed of the a negative seed of what they want to happen in the future. And then it, that becomes a part of our mass consciousness, which is a very powerful uh, tool. Mm -hmm. And then they'll pull uh, another uh, incident, like a false flag or something else, that through fear we will go back to that seed and uh, our, our, mass, our mass consciousness will remember that uh, uh, programming. Mm -hmm. And our mass consciousness will manipulate our, our shared reality and make it so. So we are the ones that actually end up casting that final spell in their magic and making it happen. Right. I am so totally with you on uh, my own understanding of that. Um, and the, uh, the cabal, the other entities that are around manipulating and watching us, they know our true potential and power. They are purposely dumbing us down about it, keeping us um, fighting each other, uh, keeping us totally uh, unaware of our true abilities because they are very afraid of us. Mm -hmm. And they also are um, indignant towards us because of, um, they see us as um, a lower life, kind of a lower life has been gifted with dream potentials. Right. And a lot of them are trying to splice those extreme potentials into themselves. Right. But there is a uh, spiritual component to it that they just do not have that same bandwidth of spiritual component that it just will never work for them. Mm -hmm. They can get the genetics in there. They can get all the different things that we have, uh, you know, physically, genetically and all that. But if they don't have the right energetic, uh, um, I guess, uh, light body and, uh, um, 
energy about them to where they and their ability to have uh, the emotional uh, spectrum that we do, they're not going to have the ability to uh, have the same uh, consciousness uh, abilities that we do. Right. Now, there's beings out there that have amazing consciousness and do ma- amazing things and uh, that are far superior. Uh, superior and more advanced than us technologically and spiritually in some ways, but we have the potential to surpass them. Right. Well, I, I, could, I couldn't agree with you more on, on what you're, you're talking about here. And um, the one thing that I've uh, formulated um, for myself is, or I formulated it out of some experiential data and talking to a lot of other people is that uh, we have a potential to reach beyond, and it is the pure emotion. I mean, I've become very aware of the pure emotions, not the contrived, manipulated emotions, but the pure feeling nature that we actually do have uh, in, our, in our spiritual nature. Um, and there's a place they can't control us anymore, and that is, the, in, my, in my mind, or the way I'm seeing things right now, uh, and feeling things is um, the door towards our own freedom. Um, because as much as they map us, data mine us, hack us, uh, there's a, there's what I could only call an, an eternal flame, and it, it does reach for freedom uh, in a manner that they can't really uh, they can't really abuse it. And I feel like that's what's happening in more and more consciousness on the planet right now. Um, well, part, part of what's happened is is uh, we've been genetically manipulated on many occasions, and. Uh, We've been genetically programmed to have a need to worship uh-huh. uh, and a need, need to, to seek some or someone to follow, a leader. Uh, as our consciousness expands, we um, are breaking through that uh, genetic programming. Mm-hmm. And uh, our consciousness is breaking through that genetic programming, and we're um, we're defeating it. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's uh, that's something that uh, you know they've they worked really hard to uh, program into us. They you know, wanted us to uh, look up to them, uh, look to them to come uh, save us, to be our saviors, and you know this and that, and. Uh, we uh, and to dumb us down about our powers to uh, have the ability to um, uh, manipulate and uh, change our realities ourselves mm-hmm. if we just come together. Right. And uh, they do not. You know, they're successfully keeping us from coming together over just petty things like the color of our skin. You know, that's just. So stupid. I mean, it's the color of the upholstery like, <laughs> of of our skin. It's like, that's how stupid can that be? I mean, that's like you know, you could have five couches sitting in the living room, and each one has a different colored upholstery, but they're all the same couch, mm-hmm. you know. And people are sitting around arguing over you know which is superior. It, I mean, they, they've managed to segment us and divide us into ideology, racism, and, and all this. And it's all purposely done to keep us from coming together and realize our true potential and our joint uh, reality, uh, joint consciousness. And uh, this has been done for a long time. Um, I posted a video about uh, our scientists, how uh, way back in the uh, 19th century, they were realizing that uh, when they were observing their um, uh, experiments, they realized that uh, the individuals that were observing the experiments were having a, a um, <clears throat> were having a, a um, were affecting the outcome of the experiment right. just by observing them uh-huh. with their consciousness. And uh, depending on the, the uh, perception or the how the person would think, the outcome of the experiment would 
be, that would affect the outcome of the experiment. And you mm -hmm. would think the, the experiment should be the same every time, the outcome. Mm -hmm. And um, this led smarter and smarter people to start understanding about the consciousness, how it affects uh, time, space, and uh, all vibratory uh, matter, energy, and thought. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, uh, science uh, diverged into what we have now as mainstream science, which is a very dumbed-down science mm -hmm. and somewhat of a religion unto itself. Yeah. And uh, then we have the black ops science, which I got a good uh, uh, baptism into, which uh, is... Uh, quite a bit different and uh, uh, is based on totally different principles and a whole different math, different type of math system. Mm -hmm. And I said in the um, uh, forum that if math is the uh, universal language, then our scientists in the mainstream don't speak the language. <laughs> no, they, they're, they're actually prohibited from speaking that language. So. Yeah, they don't speak the right language right. because there, you know, there's been all kinds of flaws found in even Einstein's equations, uh, you know, his theory of relativity. There was a couple equations, you, you know, they found you just needed to flip over, you know, and that kind of thing. You know, he made some mistakes. Mm -hmm. And uh, then... Uh, some new uh, mathematics were born, and uh, I'm, I'm, no, I'm no math person, but uh, there are some, they, I saw people writing out math on uh, boards that were, it might as well have been hieroglyphics. Right. There were very few numbers involved. Huh. Yeah, that's, a, that's another subject, actually, for another time is a uh, difference. Uh, uh, different languages, because I'm, I'm actually studying a lot of that right now, too, where, um, but we could talk about that at another time, and I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm listening, and I, it, it's an interesting phenomenon. It's almost like I'm hearing your words before you say them, and that's just an indicator for me that there's a, a field of intelligence that's available to us, and it's speaking to us all the time. Um, they have a joint conscious, yeah, joint exactly, consciousness. Yeah, exactly. And yet, we're no, able to tap into it. Uh huh. Exactly, and that is our, our, you know, those are our. I will say there are inherited abilities. They're in all of us, um, and more people are waking up now and uh, expressing that. Or I say more, more beings are being activated. And so, what I'd like to do is get into a little bit of what you've been to turn, you know, to turn on the other side of the of the consciousness table, as it were, because here we're, you're also talking about the secret state space program. Uh, you mentioned the dark fleet earlier. Um, how does all that tie in? And what are, in your opinion right now, the, um, the most important things for us as uh, individual and group consciousness to become aware of so that we can do this experiment and we can start to change it? Because it is true that our consciousness is actually moving into the realities now and changing them. Uh, and I know that's where a lot of uh, people that listen to you and write and ask you questions, uh, they're asking about the uh, AI agenda. We're talking about the black money magic uh, cabal. Uh, there's a lot of things I've just written down some notes about. Um, but just putting out a broad-based uh, uh, question to you, or how do you see this right now? Uh, what's happening out there in the galactic, uh, galactic federation and the galactic politics and and all of these races, how, how does that fit into what, you're, what you just expressed? Okay, yeah, that's, that's just a small question. Oh, I know, you know, I, I only know how to ask small questions. <laughs> no, I know. You do the best. I mean, it, obviously, we're talking of something so vast that our human mind is still uh, probably just on the edges of understanding. So okay. Yeah, that one I'm, I, can, I can answer in chunks and uh, stages. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, people often ask me, you know, they're like, okay, I see all this information. What am I supposed to do about it? What can I do? People feel so small or, you know, what am I supposed to do about it? You know, and we've all seen these reports of 
um, you know, there was, I wish I could find it. Uh, there was this, just this one study of, of a very small, maybe like 1,700 people that did it uh, all at the same time, did prayers and meditation mm -hmm. at the same time, every day for a period of time. And they brought down the overall terrorism and crime on the planet by like 73%. I, I've read that study. Actually, uh, Greg Braden speaks about it, if you want to look it up later. And uh, actually, there, people are monitoring right now the vibration of the planet uh, with these groups doing meditation. So they're making a science out of it, too. They're actually doing scientific studies. Okay. So I can post something uh, when we post this. I'll post something with some information links, okay? Yeah, and, that, and it's actually somewhere in that huge book of David's uh, source field investigation. Right. It's somewhere in that book uh, mentioned, but uh, it's uh, very, 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 very true. Mm -hmm. And you can become a part of that. Mm -hmm. Each of you, you sitting right there looking at the computer screen right now can make a choice. You can decide I I'm going to spend, I'll start 10 minutes a day and work my way up 30 minutes a day and, you know, try to get to maybe an hour or two hours a day mm -hmm. of just doing whatever type of meditation, uh, of whatever religion I am, prayer, um, of pure just being pure in that moment of prayer, of meditation, but think, thinking, meditating, praying for a positive um, timeline outcome for humanity mm -hmm. and thinking for the end of corruption and thinking for the end of suffering thing and focusing, I should say, instead of thinking, mm -hmm. focusing on, on the end of suffering, pain, and subjugation of all of humanity. If each and every one that listens to this and you get another person to do that and we get groups that start doing that, mm -hmm. That is going to have a measurable effect, sure. and that there's no need to pick up arms and uh, you know rush the gates of the nearest uh, establishment. <clears throat> this is going to have more of an effect than that, mm -hmm. and uh, this is this is what you can do. Right, and the one thing that I I add to that is uh, speak your truth. And speak it clearly. Uh, don't be intimidated by it. Inform yourself. Uh, turn off television sets. Um, you know, this, this is all part of it because we don't have an expanding consciousness uh, by turning a blind eye to what the rea reality is being practiced on our planet. So I see it as a, a two edged uh, activity in a way that one of the deep contemplation of our real reality, our real nature, which is actually peace-loving, creative beings, and how we affect our planet, and how what you brilliantly spoke of in the beginning of our speaking here is how we are, the final piece on creating the reality that we're living in is us. And so pulling off our coats, taking down our false ego identities and the, the crises that are around us, and rewriting them. And that is within our, our range of doing. Yeah. We are the tool of the 0, 0, 0, 0.1%. Mm -hmm. we, we are the tool of our own destruction and our own captivity. Exactly. Yeah. They're using our own power of the power of our own consciousness and the, the power of our own broad spectrum of emotions. They're using all of those gifts as tools to subjugate us, mm -hmm. tools against us. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we need to step outside and reclaim those gifts and use them as um, a shield 
and a sword in a nonviolent way, but um, in a way of, of truth and love and um, as a, a way to be um, truly service to others mm-hmm. and step outside of the system that we're living in, this Babylonian money magic system to where all we care about is working, uh, paying off debts, keeping up with the Joneses, having that nice car, having that 60-inch TV, uh, you know, uh, watching shows about people that have all that stuff and wanting to be like them. That is all a huge trap. Mm -hmm. And you step outside of that trap and do what I'm talking about, and you become part of the solution instead of one of the victims. Right. Or a pawn in the game. I mean, or as so many things, and maybe we can sort of segue into that right now where we've uh, been exploring, and and a lot of information says that many of these uh, uh, superiorly advanced civilizations that have a presence on our planet right now um, see us as an experiment, uh, the creator, supposed creator God, um, uh, where their experiment or where we can actually speak of those that have come here to harvest us, um, all of those agendas, uh, how do we actually see them and get, and, and get free of them? Um, and I know that's where you have a lot of information on that. And, and I do get very, uh, intrigued by, uh, what's the shadow government or the secret space program and and all of these things that are operating just below our consciousness. And and, and let me kind of break some of that down. Okay. Um, Now we have, there there is what we can call the shadow government or the five eyes, the, um, the, the apparatus that is, um, all about keeping control of everything going on down here on earth, the keeping us all the different nations in line, the individuals in line, keeping tabs on us, uh, making sure that the financial system is locked down and everyone follows uh, the Babylonian money magic system, money slave system uh, that keeps them occupied with that system. Um, But above that are these multiple um, secret Earth governments. Mm -hmm. And um, these are more of like your Hydra kind of things. And the Cabal is just like one tentacle of these secret Earth governments. Mm -hmm. They're more of the more of the Earth part. Um, these secret earth governments are extremely powerful and uh, they have their own secret space programs uh, or for for instance one one group is uh, entirely well and, and there's most likely two group two of these um, are what are we're referring to as interplanetary corporate conglomerates. Okay. And these would be like all these different defense contracting companies uh, that compete with each other, but um, people that retire from boards will retire and then go on to this board that is like a super company board that manages this interplanetary super conglomerate, mm-hmm. which is its own breakaway civilization. And they own quite a many of these uh, off-world uh, colonies, industrial complexes, mining facilities, mm-hmm. um, uh, uh, most of the... Uh, uh, materials that they uh, get for uh, building the different things they build are mined completely off planet. Uh-huh. So they're not sucking a whole lot of money off of the earth to go into a lot of these programs. They're uh, the people that are uh, working on in or living in these colonies are pretty much slaves. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've been promised, hey, you and your family 
uh, sign these papers, y'all are going to be shipped to this, and they're shown videos of like these beautiful science fiction kind of things you'll see in the movies. This is what you're going to be living like. You're going to be living like the Jetsons, mm -hmm. um, and uh, <clears throat> you'll be uh, with your skills. You'll be building this part of a spacecraft or this part uh, of a uh, replicator type thing or this part of uh, something else. There's so many things they build. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you'll be on this colony, on, on this uh, planet or, or moon or this location. And so they, they get all these promises. And then so they get their whole family, they're shipped there, and then the reality sets in. Mm -hmm. They land in pretty much a totalitarian environment where everyone's walking around, uh, pale, dreary, unhappy. Uh, they're escorted uh, at gunpoint to like an 8 by 10 8 by 8 living quarters for them and their entire family. And then they're given given rosters for what them and their entire family will uh, do, and they live there for the rest of their lives. They have arranged marriages for their kids as they grow up. It's not good. No. So, they're not paid money, you know. They're given um, a place to, you know, live and food, and they work. And uh, it's horrible. And uh, these people do the labor, mm -hmm. and uh, these people mine ast uh, asteroids and asteroid belts. They mine uh, materials on uh, different planets, and the material raw materials are taken to uh, other outposts and facilities where they are turned into uh, usable materials and uh, manufactured. And um, very little money actually goes into building these mm -hmm. different things. So I, I see a lot of times people talking about how many trillions of dollars are going into certain parts of the space program, mm -hmm. and a lot a lot of this is just uh, uh, materials that are mined and retrieved off world and being built by slave labor. Mm -hmm. So. Can I ask a question? Because uh, I haven't, I don't have it clear. Is this information that you've been given by insiders, or remote viewing, or your own experiences? Uh, my own experiences. Um, when, um, when we would, um, when the research uh, vessel, we would sometimes the scientists would be needed to uh, be brought to some of these colonies. Uh, they were d uh, different than any of the other outposts or colonies that we went to. Mm -hmm. um, when we arrived, um, we uh, as soon as we arrived, there were four to six armed guards. They escorted us directly to the point where uh, the technicians were to do their work. Uh, and there was no staying overnight. There were never any invitations to uh, tour the facility. Uh, we were told not to speak to anyone and then escorted straight back. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, but uh, this was information I was told uh, about the environment of uh, the corporate colonies. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was told that the corporate colonies, the uh, 13 original, they had uh, 13 original colonies and outposts, uh, they wanted to make sure that there was never a um, revolution or a situation that happened like in the creation of the United States. Hmm. So it was, uh, from the very beginning, it was a, a totalitarian locked down, uh, very oppressive situation. Okay, seems to be a repetition in the number 13 important. Um, my other question is, why, well, who's doing this? I mean, we were talking about an industrial corporation or complex. 
Uh, and why are they using humans for labor when they probably could be using automated? Um, yeah. They also had clones there. Okay. Right. But uh, these these were people that were uh, extreme. They uh, had brought in uh, a lot of them had been there from like uh, 60s, 70s, 80s. Okay. Had brought, been brought in and uh, had been there a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, their uh, numbers had grown quite a bit just from uh, the uh, population growth. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're, uh, I mean, they're, we had seen uh, uh, clone, uh, obvious clones, uh, people that looked exactly the same, uh, carrying, uh, 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 like, not really boxes, but uh, crate kind of boxes around. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't think there's that many quadruplets or whatever you call them. <laughs> right. You know. But uh, they were obviously, you know, clones. But uh, um, I, I think that uh, the human labor, they were easier to control, mm -hmm. uh, train uh, using uh, the methods of uh, the, uh, the quick uh, uh, neurological training where you set, in front of, set someone in front of a, those curved screens, give them an injection, and... Uh, show them a video that's uh, real quick, uh, a whole bunch of information mm -hmm. overlaid going real quick, and it goes into your brain uh, at a very high rate, gives you, I've had it done to me, it gives you uh, a headache, makes you nauseous, but uh, you take in an incredible amount of information. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure this was used quite a bit on, on these people. Uh, to train them and probably also to train the clones or whatever. Okay. Um, but um, that at that point, that you know, that's what these people were doing. Okay. Uh, why they weren't using robots, I don't know. But uh, a lot of it could go back to a lot of the uh, their their uh, probably fears or being careful of AIs or. Uh, infiltration of different uh, AI kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Sure. Right. Well, it just comes to my mind as you're speaking that there are certain things that the human uh, human body type can do that other types of bodies can't. So, uh, you know, it would make sense that they would actually... Do and it. humans are very, um, very adaptable, very good engineers. But there's uh, uh, a lot of... Uh, uh, one of the things that uh, the actual see, Solar Warden is a uh, older uh, secret space program. Mm -hmm. They're uh, and kind of a one of the more aging groups out there, technology-wise. Um, they were put out there to pretty much police the solar system for incoming, outgoing um, visitors. Uh, there are literally uh, thousands of different groups that are coming and uh, we're kind of along a kind of like Silk Road, mm -hmm. uh, um, galactic Silk Road of travelers mm -hmm. and uh, human beings are highly sought after for many, many different reasons. Um, we're a commodity mm -hmm. and um, the um, the uh, group that I was talking about, and this is going to sound strange, but uh, uh, human beings have become uh, very well known for our engineering and uh, production of advanced technology. Mm -hmm. And this corporate group uh, doesn't only produce uh, technology and products for the secret space programs, but they also produce it for off-world groups. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm, I mean, I can follow that, and that's, it's fascinating. And um, so these, these groups, and then one question was, um, are these uh, corporate groups, um, whatever you want to call them, the, uh, uh, just call them power brokers for the sake of a word, are they uh, human? Are they extraterrestrial? Are they uh, dealing? Are you? Are, I'm breaking up. Yeah, you're breaking up, but uh, yeah, they're human. Okay. 
they're human. So they're human Earth based. Uh, yes. There, there. It's, it's a uh, just called a secret space program that is uh, farming uh, and getting resources from off world, and they're yeah. they're using humans to uh, part of their deal is to use the human to do they're, that. They're a very opportunistic group. Mm -hmm. um, they keep and save a lot of the most advanced toys for themselves. Mm -hmm. So they have most of the most advanced. Uh, toys. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where do you uh, do you have an idea of who they are? I mean, we talk about you know, obviously the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers and the you know the Soros of the world. You know the big money people that are the faces out there. They're all pretty well known. Uh, what's behind that? Uh, those 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 are all the people down here on the. Okay. There's a uh, right now. There is what. Uh, it's referred to as a shadow civil war going on. Okay. And that's going on amongst some of the secret space program. Some of what we call the white hats in the secret space program and their allied off-world groups that are in league with them think that it is high time that the technologies that uh, have to do with harmonic healing of the human body, um, free energy, uh, um, technologies that will um, do away, help cleanse the earth of certain pollution and damage that's been done, mm -hmm. be released to humanity. The uh, issue is that once this is done, it will nullify and do away with any need for a financial system. There will be no need for the Babylonian money magic slave system. That's a big problem for the, uh, that's what's going on above and then below we have a uh, major war going on over the global financial system mm -hmm. between uh, the BRICS groups, the Western Cabal, uh, and some other groups, and uh, the different dragon groups, friends groups that are all uh, um, fighting over uh, control of a different variations of a global financial system which will be based on a, uh, a debt system, which is just going to be another mask of a Babylonian uh, debt slave system. Mm -hmm. And uh, what it all comes down to is um, what happens with this shadow civil war and what happens with this extreme, and they know that there's an extreme awakening happening on the planet among people. Mm -hmm. uh, many of them have openly been talking about it, mm -hmm. about hum humanity's awakening at, a, at an alarming rate. Mm -hmm. A lot of them think that we're awakening too late, but it's not. Um, as, but as we're awakening, Many of us are, are wondering, what do we do with this awakening? Mm -hmm. And that goes back to what we were talking about earlier, about start focusing your intent, focusing your consciousness mm -hmm. on a joint changed reality mm -hmm. to where these negative forces have no place and this new reality that we're focusing on. Um, well, let's just break for a second here. Um, there's some questions I want to ask you regarding your own visions, because I'm, what I'm talking about is imagery and visionary qualities that we have. Uh, but before we get into that, because that may be uh, uh, the question for the end of this particular uh, part, uh, of course, anything you want to speak of, too, please bring it up. Uh, the one thing that we're, you know, we're always been looking at, all of us that are, are doing this work, is uh, the artificial intelligence 
Um, and I've had my own run-ins with them. I've had my own understandings of it. Uh, it's as varied as there are conscious levels. Uh, I know you have a lot of experience and you've been trained to be looking for those. Uh, uh, they come in any manner of things. I mean, we could talk about the bots. Uh, we could talk about the scuttlers that come through computers. Uh, we can talk about embedded thoughts. Uh, we can talk about, uh, you know, constructed paradigms or constructed holographs that people fall into. I mean, there's a huge, huge thing, but in general, uh, we've also are talking about, I guess, a lot of the uh, chemtrailing and the uh, nanotechnologies and the co-opting of the human body so that these artificial intelligences can run us. Um, all of that comes under that category. Um, and I think it's important to address it from your perspective, uh, the dangers and also how to recognize it. And then I'll have a little, another little question along that line. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I have absolutely no information or knowledge uh, about chemtrails other than I have seen them myself. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and what I've read online. Um, so um, I, I've seen all different types of ideas put forth about them. So um, I, I have I have not, nothing to offer there that would be other than speculation. And I want to stay away from speculation. Right. Um, <clears throat> the um, the AI thing was um, has really been focused on a lot. Um, from my last talk, um, it uh, it was something that was clearly a uh, very um, it was something that was very concerning to the off world groups and to the various uh, uh, programs. Uh, you were always screened. Uh, you would go through questioning um, to, you know, ask if you, uh, I, I don't remember all the different questions. They, they would ask you questions. Some of them would be innocuous questions that had nothing to do with it. And some of them would be uh, keyed in questions. Mm -hmm. But, you know, things like, uh, have you seen shadows in the sight of uh, your vision peripherally? That could or could not have had something to do directly with the AIs. It may have been one of the uh, tests or uh, ambiguous questions, mm -hmm. but there was a list of questions that they would always ask you. Uh, but one of them was, uh, had, have you seen, uh, you know, the spider kind of things? Uh, if you see the spider kinds of things, that isn't, them trying to infect you—that means you're you have you are infected. Mm. Uh, you have been infected. 